Hi, I'm Michael. This is Lessons from the Screenplay. Last year, Matt from Nando V Movies assembled a team of YouTubers to dissect their favorite scenes from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This year, Matt's plans have mutated to look at another franchise, the X-Men films. The midpoint sequence of X-Men First Class is a particularly memorable one, delivering a compelling twist that launches the story into its second half. But the sequence is powerful not just because of what happens, but also where it happens. In his book, The Anatomy of Story, John Truby writes, The meaning we take from physical forms and spaces seems to be deeper than culture and learning. It seems to be part of the human psyche. This is why it has profound effects on the audience. Just as individuals in a story can embody character archetypes, such as hero, villain, mentor, or ally, the setting of a scene or sequence can also function on an archetypal level. So today, I want to examine how the midpoint of X-Men First Class uses the archetype of the warm house to create a feeling of safety and establish the character's roles, to explore what happens when that space is attacked, and to explain why its destruction ultimately forces the mutants to mature and evolve. Let's take a look at X-Men First Class. Returning to the anatomy of story, Truby discusses different types of archetypal settings and storytelling, including the warm house. The warm house and storytelling is big, though usually not a mansion, with enough rooms, corners, and cubby holes for each inhabitant's uniqueness to thrive. Notice that the warm house has within it two additional opposing elements, the safety and coziness of the shell, and the diversity that is only possible within the large. Be it Hogwarts and Harry Potter, the Shire and the Lord of the Rings, or the Starship Enterprise in Star Trek, many archetypal stories establish a space where both the characters and the audience can feel safe. In First Class, which serves as a prequel to most of the X-Men franchise, the newly recruited mutants find the space after being brought to the Division X facility by a CIA agent. While the compound is designed with the sterility of a government facility, the room assigned to the young mutants feels more like a college dorm or student union, complete with a jukebox, a bar, a supply of snacks, and a pinball machine. During their playful, if destructive, time together, the young mutants learn to be comfortable with their powers, find safety in their new space, and start to relate to each other. But when the adults see the destruction the young mutants have caused, they scold them. I expect more from you. The setting of the warm house in which the young mutants can bond, learn, and make mistakes under the authority of experienced adults highlights the archetypal roles of student and teacher. Now that the archetypal setting has been established, along with the characters' roles within it, the scene is set for the attack on the facility. As the scene opens, two CIA agents begin picking on the mutants. Oh, I didn't know the circus was in town. Demonstrating again their position with little power over authority figures. They're just guys being stupid. Guys being stupid I can handle. Okay, I've handled that my whole life. But I'd rather a bunch of guys stare at me with my clothes off than the way these ones stare at me. At us. Then, the attack begins. First, the agent who brought them to safety is killed right in front of the group. Stray gunfire causes the window to shatter once again. Only this time, it's not a game. The traumatic psychological effect of the attack on the young mutants is manifest in the destruction of the warm house, as each wall, window, and guard that they thought protected them is stripped away. But when Sebastian Shaw, the film's main antagonist, finally approaches them, the scene takes a surprising turn. Good evening. My name is Sebastian Shaw, and I am not here to hurt you. Instead of treating the mutants like inexperienced students, Shaw regards them as equals. My friends, there's a revolution coming. Shaw's speech explains the two main mutant ideologies that emerge in the X-Men franchise. When mankind discovers who we are, what we can do, each of us will face a choice, the enslaved, or rise up to rule. One side wants to gain acceptance from humanity to live in harmony with them. 
while the other chooses to go to war with humanity, believing that mutants will never be accepted. Shaw offers the young mutants power and authority. Come on. We don't belong here. Inviting them to evolve by physically leaving the space that defined their roles as unequipped students. That's when Darwin, who has assumed the role of the group's unofficial leader, takes one last stand to defend what's left of their warm house. Alex, get out! Do it! But here, at the midpoint of the film, adapt to this. The team is not yet ready to defeat their powerful antagonist. leaving both the physical and psychological safety of this space destroyed once and for all. In the scene following the attack, the decision about what the mutants will do next is rooted in the question of where they will do it. We can't stay here. Even if they reopen the department, it's not safe. Xavier tries to send the mutants home, but they refuse. We're not going home. What? He's not going back to prison. Their experience has shown the students that they won't be able to hide behind anyone's protection. It's time for them to grow out of the roles that previously defined them. They're just kids. No, they were kids. Shaw has his army. We need ours. But with their safe haven taken away, they need a new place where they can train to become empowered, fully realized versions of themselves. We've got nowhere to go. Yes, we do. When Charles takes the team to his mansion in Westchester, we see the origins of the X Mansion and Xavier Institute. This is yours. No, it's ours. A space which will still be subject to attack, but which will be destined to serve generations of X-Men as a safe haven and the ultimate warm house. X-Men First Class demonstrates how the setting of a scene can enrich the story and evoke an emotional response from the audience, conveying feelings of safety in its design, terror when it's attacked, and hopelessness upon its destruction, ultimately forcing the heroes of the story to adapt to a new environment, one which will help them evolve from students into X-Men. Hey guys, Michael here. Editing is one of the most important and easily one of my favorite parts of the filmmaking process. The first time you put two shots back to back and realize that suddenly you've created meaning is a truly thrilling moment. But one of the challenges of editing is that, like anything else, it takes a lot of practice. So what do you do if you don't have a camera to go out and shoot something? Well, what I would often do is just take footage from elsewhere and then start to play with it until I created something that I liked. It's such a simple concept, but it can be hard to know where to start which is why I want to recommend the Skillshare class, Filmmaking from Home, Turn Found Footage into a Compelling Video by Filmmaker Penny Lane. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people, with thousands of classes in writing, music, productivity, filmmaking, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access, so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you and your goals. Penny's class is all about transforming existing content into something new, and I can say from experience that this is a great and inexpensive way to hone your editing skills. The better you are at creating something from nothing, the better you'll be later at turning something into something great. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership. So head to Skillshare and start learning today. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank Matt from Nanovi Movies for organizing one excellent scene. Make sure to check out the playlist of all the other videos and feel free to make your own. Just make sure when you upload it that you tag it with one excellent scene. Thank you as always to the patrons on Patreon for making this channel possible. And thank you for watching.